I feel like a big part of music nowadays is collaborating, but I also like want to protect my sound. So like I'm kind of picky of who I like to collaborate with. I collaborate with QBeats a lot because I feel like we have a like, good chemistry and every time like we like make a beat or like make a song it like becomes like a big record. Producers in 2019 have almost reached the level of rappers in terms of their notoriety and impact on hip hop. Guys such as Metro Boomin, DJ Mustard, Tay Keith, Nick Mira, and Murda Beats are now household names for rap fans and can easily be recognized by their signature tag that, not gonna lie, is the best part of some songs. Metro with all the producers soaking up the spotlight and cashing in on their now established brand, it's rare for anyone to work behind the scenes and strictly focus on the music. However, there are certain outliers that don't fit the mold of the modern day producer, and they go by the name of Q Beats, a producer duo that have helped create some of the biggest hip hop records in the world while leaving little to no trace of their existence. My boy Q Beats, um, it's actually two dudes, um, but Q Beats, man, he's done, he's on everything. Travis Scott, Kanye, Drake, whatever, they're on it. Kevin and Tim Gomringer, the twin brothers from Germany that make up Q Beats. For the average rap fan out there, you probably have never heard of them. And for those who happen to be in the producer community, you may or may not have heard their name come up in conversation in videos such as the Murder Beats Genius Deconstructed episode shown earlier. But even with that being the case, the duo has been so elusive throughout their career that they have never truly gotten the recognition they deserve. I understand that they work behind the scenes to probably avoid the clout chasing culture that many other producers thrive on, but it's still important to highlight their work and dive deeper into who they really are. Because frankly, if it wasn't for them, guys like Murder Beats and Metro Boomin wouldn't have as many platinum plaques hanging on the wall. So at this point in the video, you may be confused as to what QBeats really brings to the table in terms of their production credits on songs such as Fifi, Tunnel Vision, and Goosebumps. So let's quickly break it down. Before for artists like Travis Scott and Drake hop in the booth, they need to have a beat to rap over first. This is where producers like Murda Beats and Metro Boomin come into play. If you know anything about making beats, it's very common for producers to start off with a melody, then move on to the drums to finish off the instrumental. As a former type beat producer myself, yeah, seriously, I actually did start this channel uploading beats and tutorials. Yeah, I'm gonna start off with how I made the uh, bass melody, which is the main sound throughout the track. All right, to start it off, I started with this Omnisphere uh, sound right here. I can easily say that coming up with a dope melody is much harder than coming up with a drum pattern. With guys like Murder Beats working with so many of rap's biggest stars at the same time, they need to be as efficient as possible in the studio. For this to take place, producers like himself are sent loops, which are basically just 8 to 16 bar melodies that can easily be dragged into production software such as FL Studios and utilized to create beats quickly. Now let's shift our focus to QBeats and how they fit into this picture. Let's just say it's simple. They are the best in the world world at making loops for producers, so songs such as No Heart by 21 Savage and I by Lil Skies have melodies created by the one and only Q Beats. Yet, with this being said, you would never know this because on both these records, producers Metro Boomin and Danny Wolf have their signature tags at the beginning. Metro Boomin wants some more. Danny, I, I see you. I, while Q Beats don't. This then leads people to believe that Metro is fully responsible for songs such as No Heart, but in reality, that track would have never been created if it wasn't for Q Beats sending through the melody first. So now that we've broken down what Q Beats really does, let's take a closer look at their discography and who Kevin and Tim really are. Okay. To call QBeats ghosts on the internet is an understatement to say the least. In preparation for this video, I started off by Googling their name to see what would come up, like anyone would do. I knew that they wouldn't have that much information online, but little did I know it was gonna be as scarce as it really was. For example, let's look at their Wikipedia page. Yup, basically nothing here. Twitter, just one retweet, okay. <laughs> Facebook, hasn't been updated since 2015. And if you continue to go down the rabbit hole of Google like I did, it's a dead end. The one place where they seem to remain active is Instagram. And after one click glance of their page, it's easy to see that there's nothing really personal on here other than they seem to enjoy what looks like iced tea and Pepsi. But damn, look how many records they produce. Out like a light, hey, yeah. Better keep up, yeah. That's a fire, yeah. Better leave, I'm not sentimental. Whoa. Thank you. 
In fact, here's their whole discography. Let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite song is that they produced. Personally, mine is probably Roll in Peace because that song with Kodak and X has some legendary production and that's one of my favorite songs of all time. After digging deeper for more information on Q-Beats, I stumbled upon a series of interviews with the brothers from 2015 on the German YouTube channel hiphop.de. But unfortunately, I don't speak German and there were no English subtitles, so that was no help. At this point, I thought all hope was lost on finding more information on these guys until I somehow was able to work some magic and set up a FaceTime call with the producers themselves. not play my music super loud. That was a bad joke, I'm sorry. But in all seriousness, I found literally the only article on the two brothers that provided any background, and I was able to translate it to English, so let's break down their come up. Born on March 15th, 1991 in Germany, the brothers were first noticed in 2011 while working in an online music workshop. In this workshop, they submitted a few of their instrumentals, which were then picked up by a German rapper that goes by the name of Fard, hopefully I pronounced that right, who was doing pretty well in the German hip hop scene at the time. Time. This got their foot into the door and led to bigger placements over the next five years, which then resulted in their breakthrough placement on Drake and Meek Mill's song, Rico. After establishing themselves with the bigger US artists and producers, they then landed their next big placement on Drake's song, Summer 16, then signed to Universal Music Publishing Group, and the rest, let's just say, is history. It's crazy to think that a couple of relatively unknown guys from Germany can have such a big influence on the sound that's currently taking the hip-hop world by storm. Although producers online try to make tutorials on how to recreate the Q-Beat style of melodies, the brothers just have a talent that cannot be matched, and I just hope as time moves on, they get the recognition they deserve. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments section down below if you've heard of Q-Beats before watching this and who your favorite producer is. I'm Marvelous Beats. Catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.